And right, I'm a New Yorker. I gotta, I gotta admit, man, your your New York Knicks teams I grew up on with you at the one, Mello, Amari Stoudemire. Those are great memories for me as a kid. I always say that New York City is rocking and the best it could be when the Knicks are good. You agree with that? I totally agree. Totally agree. It was some fun times for me, man. It was, it was, uh, it was probably some of the best times of my career in the NBA. Being in New York during that time and winning, because when you win in New York, is is nothing like it. It's nothing like it. So you know, we was and we was running, winning at a very high level. You know, we was one of the, we was one of the top teams, one of the most talked about teams in the NBA during that time. You know, when I was in New York, so um, it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. A career high 17 points per game and nine assists per game in 54 games for that first year in New York. Then you traded to Denver in the Carmelo Anthony deal. Were you bummed out after kind of getting your feet set, playing your best basketball in New York, and then you get back two years later? Go through all of that for me. It was surprising and it was upsetting a little bit because I wasn't even supposed to be in the trade. Um, And I think for what I heard, George Carl. George Carl put me into the trade the last the last minute. He said that he he wanted me, and um, that's the only way they was gonna do the deal with Carmelo. And that's what happened. At least that's what I heard, and that's what happened. So it was just like, well, dang, you know, you know, it's it sucked. I ended up coming back, but uh, it still sucked at that moment because, like you said, I was playing my best basketball and. You know, we was we was good. We was rocking. We still was like a top top five, top six team in uh, in the in the East during that time. You know, obviously adding you know adding Carmelo would have been you know ooh, that would have been a whole lot more. We probably did some very special things with all the young guys that we had. We had some young good guys: Gallo, Wilson Chandler, you know, Landry Fields, Timothy Moscow. Like we had some. We had some very talented guys at that time to to do some special things. But, you know, when you get somebody at that talent, you got to give up a lot of stuff. So everything was was taken away. It was all good. You know, me and Amari talk about it sometimes. You know, like, you know, Melo was going to come anyway. You know, we felt like that next year. You know, we knew he was coming. But, you know, it was still nerve-wracking for the – people in the front office because they're like, oh, we don't know. We can't mess up on this opportunity. We got to move on it now. So, you know, being older now, being older uh, later on, like me understanding the business side of it, I get it. You know, you don't want to lose a caliber guy like Melo. So you try to jump on that opportunity when it was, when it was presented. So, you know, the Knicks did that and that's what happened. So you got to, you got to deal with it. Well, it's all a business, like you were saying. And, you know, you do get back a couple years later, 2012, 2013. That squad was crazy, crazy deep. Yourself, Melo, Amari, Tyson Chandler dropping 20 rebounds like it's nothing. Jason Kidd, Steve Novak, JR, Shumpert, Rashid. I mean, the list goes on and on. You guys finished 54 and 28 that year, number two behind Miami. You guys take out Boston and then that series against Indiana. What happened? Was it a, was it a bad matchup? I don't know that it was a bad matchup. It was just we couldn't get no wins in their building, you know, you know, and um, we had a lot of injuries at that time too. You know, Melo's shoulder was messed up. Jr. back, um, so guys wasn't a hundred percent from from that Boston series, from just the season that we had. Guys being banged up. Jay Kidd wasn't a hundred percent. Um, so you you going against team that's really good, really good defensively. It was very physical defensively, you know. And um, when you're going against a team like that, it's kind of – it's it's hard when guys are not 100%, guys are not healthy. So it was tough, man. And it, and it was a tough matchup. You know, we kind of – we played small with Melo at the four, which was uh, – which would work for us all year. But then you're playing in a seven-game series against, you know, Indiana Pacers, and they got – uh, what's what's big boy name? Seven Hibbert. footer. Hibbert. Yeah, big Hibbert, and then you got David West. You know who was a uh, abusing six nine, strong. You know, just just a, a a big body down there that was that could score, rebound, could do a lot of stuff. So you know that was a they had a they had a physical team, man, and kind of beat us up a little bit. In that first game, they was able to steal it, and we just come bounce back from that because. They won at home, we won at home, they won at home, we won at home. And that last game, that game six, you know, we couldn't get that win. We was close. 
couldn't get that win to come back to the Garden to beat them because I feel like, and you know, some other people may be like, oh yeah, or whatever, but I feel like we probably had the best chance to beat Miami that year because we beat them three games out of four that season. You yep. know what I'm saying? We we was three and one with them during the season. You know, they they didn't want to see us. I didn't. I believe that they didn't want to see our our team. But you know, can't can't speak on that. That didn't happen. So. <laughs> That squad was just too deep. The, it, it, the difference with Miami would have been the bench scoring, for sure, because the Knicks, I mean, that second unit was incredible. Um, yeah. Carmelo Anthony today, not in the NBA. Does he deserve to be? No question. I think he still can help somebody. You know, he, he's still a guy that can score the ball, put that ball in the basket. You always need a guy that can that can hit big shots, that's not afraid to hit big shots, you know, and just can play. He can play the game. So I think he can definitely help. So one of these playoff teams, hopefully he'll get picked up here in the second half of the season. You know, once trades and stuff start happening, you know, hopefully somebody will pick him up going into the second half of the season, going into the playoffs. So, because he definitely can help someone for sure. I was reliving some of your glory days, my young fandom glory days last night. I was watching Jason Kidd highlights when he was on the Knicks at 39. I forgot how good he was on that team. And he all of a sudden became a three-point shooter. What did you, what did you learn from Jay Kidd in those years? J. Kidd was one of those guys where he would see stuff on the court and he would tell me and like, and I would just execute it. And I'd be like, wow, how did you see that? Like, and then he'll explain to me what he was reading, what he was looking at. So he taught me a lot and he, and the guy that I looked up to, to, to come in and say, look, you the point guard, I'm going to play the two. That was so, Man, that that gave me so much confidence, gave me so much like, like, dang, like Jason Kidd believed in me. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that gave me the utmost confidence like that. So, you know, he would help me out a lot, man. He would be in practice. He would, he would, you know, help me with reads and stuff on pick and rolls and reads off, you know, the offense we was running. So for me, man, it was it was one of the most amazing years that that I've had in my career, just being with a guy like that to to really teach me and walk me through a lot of stuff. And a guy that I really looked up to and admired as a point guard, as a player. So, you know, it was it was it was fun. It was fun, man. And just see some of the stuff he was doing as as he got older, shooting those threes like that, man. That was that was that was amazing too. <laughs> and he was never a three point shooter. So that that's what makes it the funny funniest part with this headband. What a what a great time. What a great time. <laughs> 